You have let me down for the last time, car battery. So yes, another dead car battery. If you see my channel years ago, I built a hybrid supercapacitor car battery for my 2013 Kia Soul. It's been running for six years without having to change anything on it. This is from my wife's 2014 Kia Soul, and it keeps eating batteries about once every year or two. Uh, I'm sick and tired of it. So it's time to build her a super cap battery pack. The thing is, it's getting cheaper now because super caps are getting cheaper and the batteries are getting more expensive. A two year warranty battery for hers is a group 124R. That's the size of this battery that fits in her car. For a two or three year warranty battery, it's almost $200 now. It's insane. So, unfortunately, the company that I used the super caps for my car went out of business because they were nice and tiny and had nice energy density and oh God, they were perfect. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the other end of the spectrum because I got this, these sell for almost thousand dollar brand new. There's a company down in Florida that is selling these B stock used. Perfectly fine, it's just, yeah, they're kind of dirty and they've been used, big freaking deal. They're super caps, they should last almost forever indefinitely. Uh, I bought this for $139 used. And this is the Ioxus, I-O-X-U-S, that's the brand name of the super caps themselves. I've actually played with their products when they first came out. They are kind of hard to get in individual quantities though because they don't like to deal with the end person. If you're not buying 10,000 of their product at a time, they don't want to talk to you. Either which way, that's the manufacturer of the Super Caps, but this is the Ultra Cap module. And this is a Group 31 battery. This one is meant to replace one of the multiple batteries that are in uh, tractor trailers. It is much bigger compared to that. I don't even know if I can fit just this unit itself in the same space that that battery did. I may have to break this open, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. And this thing, it's got more than just super caps into it because the dang thing weighs like 37 pounds. Each super cap should only weigh maybe like a pound or two. And look at these bumps, there's about five to each row. There's two rows somewhere encased in here but there's actually lights on here. There's a run, a maintenance, a Bluetooth, and an air light over here. It's laid out quite nicely, and you gotta get an app. Well, you don't have to get the app, but the app definitely lets you help control the battery. Let's get this over on the test bench and get that app downloaded and see what we can do with this unit first. Okay, so I got the super cap hooked up to my bench power supply right now. Power supply is not on, but we can also see the battery or the super cap is not putting out any power whatsoever. So let's set this for voltage set 14.4 at 12 amps, which is the max my power supply can do here. And let's turn it on. And immediately goes up to 14 volts. And we can look on top here and we can see there's a maintenance light on here. So let's get the Bluetooth app up and running. Unfortunately, I couldn't use my S20 because the app itself is actually too old. It won't run on Android 12. This is an old S8, which is like half pulled apart, but it works perfectly fine. And this is running Android 9, I believe. So the program is Ustart. Open that up, tell it to rescan. Now that we have power going to it and it immediately shows up. So let's click on that. If it'll let me, there we go, click. And we can see now that the battery is currently in maintenance mode and now it's in run mode, it's happy. And you'll see this little green graph around it. That's telling you how much the super cap is actually charged. Now I've played with this a little bit and I can get it charged almost all the way up to the top and that's it. Uh, we can also see now, now that it's in run mode, it's actually charging. It's taking about six amps and 81 watts right now, trying to top itself off. So let's let this sit here. Yeah, you can see the voltage dropping up and down. I think the super caps are actually at like eight volts. There has to be a DC to DC converter in here somehow that puts out the required voltage all the time regardless. But let's let it finish charging up and see what it does. 
Okay, about two minutes later, you can see it's pretty much charged. There's a little section. I think that's just internal degradation. This battery is probably, or this super cap's probably five years old at least. So that's about as charged as it gets. And you can see it's not really pulling anything. Every once in a while, it'll do a quick blip just to keep it topped off. But we're sitting, yeah, it's basically pulling a quarter of a watt. That's it. And if we also look at the top, since we are connected through Bluetooth, you can see we now have a blue light as well. Let me get my uh, 100 amp load onto this unit and see what it does. Because remember, right now this uh, power supply is acting as a battery. This super cap system will not turn on and be available until it sees a good voltage on it. It's meant to be put in parallel with other tractor trailer batteries. So give me one second. Okay, we're gonna keep the benchtop power supply on, it's regular settings and it's gonna act as a virtual lithium iron phosphate battery. This is just gonna be a display for us. And this is my 100 amp hour carbon pile load. So let's turn this on for five seconds, see what happens. One, two, three, four, five. We saw over here and over there, basically the battery went down to 13 volts, never went any lower, Definitely got some heat coming out of here and you can see it recharging right now and it really didn't take that much of a charge out of the battery or out of the super caps and it's actively recharging itself like after a starting cycle. Let's hit it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfectly fine. Definitely discharged more, but we're still the got what, three quarters of the battery here or a super cap i keep on saying battery um so honestly cranking a four-cylinder car once it starts spinning is maybe 100 to 200 amps this is 100 amp so starting a car once will probably take about a third of the charge out of this whole unit so you got plenty of reserve just built into this so i think the next step here is to get this recharge again which will only take a few minutes for it to recharge it's already jumping back up and let's go out to the car and see if we can rig this up and even fit it in the space where the old battery was so if you watched my youtube short that i posted last week i showed this temporary setup cause that regular lead acid battery completely died it would not last a week until i got this and got it installed and all running so what it is, this is the brand new 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I got from Amazon for like 40 or 50 bucks or so. And this is the smaller, let's see if I, you know what, I'll take it out here and show you a second, but this is a smaller amperage, Amperix branded, which they're out of business now, uh, super cap, to double array. So let me get this out of here and we'll see if this fits in there and if the wind doesn't blow me over. Okay, so I got the temporary super cap pack out and you can see these are blue, they are Amperix, uh, lower amperage super caps. So again, even though this is only a four cylinder, these did really well for doing constant service for one week. I didn't think they would hold up, but they did. So let me set up the camera and see if we can fit that into there. Okay, let's see how lucky I am here. Positive goes to the left. And, holy crap, it fits. It barely fits, but holy crap, it fits. That's insane. And it's actually in there pretty good. I will have to find some way to secure it. And I gotta figure out where I'm gonna put that 20 amp hour battery. <laughs> but this is st step one. Give me a second, let's go to step two. So here's my thought process. Since this fits in here perfectly, what if I just secure this battery right on top of the super cap pack? And then if this works, all I have to do is go to the auto parts store and get a better ground for this side, because this one's a little small and I'd rather just get a generic ground that I could put in here to here, a little beefier than this one. And the positive side, yeah, it doesn't reach up and I'm not cutting the positive side. I'd rather just run a short jumper, get like a two gauge jumper to go from here to there and then electrical tape this all over. And then I just gotta run the positive and negatives. Like I got this set up for the positive and negative, the same direction as this battery. And on the positive side, put a one tenth of an ohm, 25 watt resistor to decouple like I did with my car six years ago. So this way 
this does all the starting power and we don't hurt this battery by pulling 40 50 amps at a shot when it's only rated probably for about 20 amps we want this battery to last a good 10 years so with that being done let's see if the hood closes and there's enough clearance for the battery to sit up top here first click it makes it, it's not hitting, it's not doing anything. It works. Let's go to local auto parts store. Let me get some parts and we'll continue this build. Okay, so status update. I've got the lithium iron phosphate battery electrical tape tied down all the way around like crazy to the super cap pack. It is not going anywhere and it is mounted down. It's not going anywhere. It fits in there perfectly. I also updated the ground. I got rid of this rinky dink one from Kia and got a six gauge ran directly from the original spot, which will go to the ground here. And on the positive side, since uh, the original connectors would not meet up to here, I also put an extension on here, which we will connect here in a little bit, and electrical tape over the original exposed positive connection so they don't short out anywhere. So next thing we gotta do is connect the lithium iron phosphate battery itself. Okay, it's time for final connection. I got my positive lead here with my 0.1 ohm 25 watt resistor that will isolate the battery from the actual starting current negative over here then i got my main negative and my main positive is sitting over here so let's connect the positive side up first my wife stopped by napa and picked up these i guess they're lead but they fit the threads i swear they fit the threads <laughs> there we go yeah see so it fits the threads so let's go ahead and connect the positive side first. Okay, unfortunately, all I have is a half inch breaker bar for this. So I can tighten it up somewhat like this. Nice and tight. Let's move over to the negative side. Okay, so here's the negative side. We can see the three lights. Right now, everything's off because it's in sleep mode. The second I connect this negative terminal from the battery to the super caps, we should get a yellow maintenance. There's our yellow maintenance. And of course, no real sparking or anything. What is going to give us the spark is when we connect the negative for the car. That's going to be pulling about two or three amps, so there will be a slight spark with this. Let's force this on back here a little bit. Actually, not really. Go ahead and put this on here. I'm gonna have to get a wrench to get in there a little bit better, but it's tight enough for the moment. So let's see what the current voltage is. We still have the yellow maintenance light on right now. We're running at 13.28 volts, and that is the resting voltage of this super cap. Go ahead, try starting it. Oh, that's good. Didn't go into run mode. Why didn't it go into run mode? Interesting. Okay, so it wouldn't start the first time because we're only getting about 15, 20 amps from the lithium iron phosphate battery. Nowhere near enough to crank the battery. And this super cap is still in maintenance mode. So let's see if we can wake it up with the app. How's it going to run mode? There we go. Okay, so pin one, two, three, four, put it in the run mode. Now it's now it's good to go. Go ahead, love, try it again. Oh yeah. So you can see this this battery is being recharged at seven amps right now. This is running perfectly fine. Go ahead and turn it off. Go ahead and start it again. Pulled maybe nine amps from this battery. That's it during the start. Everything else came from the super cap. Now the question is, now we're gonna let this run for five minutes. Then we're gonna let this sit for an hour because this super cap supposedly goes into sleep mode after an hour, but it should still be active and available for starting. All the lights will go out. So 
I'll be back probably about an hour and a half. Let this sit for a bit and we'll see if it auto goes back to run now that it's out of maintenance mode. So it's been sitting for well over an hour, practically almost two hours, and we are still sitting in run state. The green light is on. At this point, it should be all off and just sitting in standby mode. And I think that's happening because this super cap is meant to be connected to lead acid batteries, which normally rest around 12.6 volts. But we're connected to a lithium iron phosphate battery that's a 13.2. So I think it's tricking this to always be on. Let's check the voltage of this after sitting here doing nothing for two hours. 13.28, that's the regular resting voltage of the lithium iron phosphate. Let's also check the amperage draw from the lithium battery, see how much it's yanking from it. And as you can tell, we're only pulling 150 milliamps right now because the car is in complete sleep mode. And honestly, this isn't really pulling any power from that because that's the normal sleep mode for this car, even though it's still active. Which means it really shouldn't be a problem. I'm waiting to see if there's any like little blip that's keeping itself topped off. But even if it is blipping to keep itself topped off, it's not very often. So I don't think it's going to be a problem with this always being on and running and ready to go. So with that being happened, let's go ahead and have my wife go ahead and start the car again and just make sure it's still good after two hours. Here you go, love. <laughs> Now we can see the initial power draw just from everything turning on in the car. And go ahead and start whenever you want. Thirteen amps max on the lithium iron phosphate battery. This unit's perfectly fine and happy. Let it run for about thirty seconds just to retop everything back off. Um, now the next step is I'm going to leave the hood just popped and let this sit overnight and see if it's still sitting at around 13.2 volts or if it starts dropping. So be back tomorrow morning. Okay, so it's the next morning. Haven't touched the car probably in over what, 14 hours at least. So let's pop the hood and do some measurements first before we try starting it again. I left the head hood popped. This way I don't have to unlock the car. It's still in sleep mode. So let's get a meter and test this out. Okay, let's see what the voltage is. And we are still at 13.25 volts, which is the resting full charge voltage of the lithium iron phosphate. So even though if I bring the camera over here, you'll see the super cap pack never went to sleep. It's still in run mode. It pulled practically no power keeping itself maintained, ready for instant run. Uh, let's check the amperage coming off of the lithium iron phosphate. Can I get that? There you go, now you can see it. Practically nothing, like 10 milliamps, that's it. That is perfect. I think it's time to do a crank test. And there we go, 13.25. Go ahead, love, unlock the car and go ahead and start it. Okay, initial voltage drop. Never went below 12 volts and immediately up to 14.6 and it's coming back down a little bit. No problems whatsoever. I think this will be good for another 5-10 years easily. So I'm going to call this a successful project, at least initially. Since this is a new one, I will still do my yearly updates on my car, my custom built one that's going on six years easily. Um, this one, I need to put a note on here when I actually installed this, this way I know. Uh, I need to tie up some wires, which I'm not gonna do on camera. I just need to zip tie and get things all nice and tidy in here. But I'm gonna do a one month, a three month, a six month, and then a one year update on this system. We'll test it again, see how it's doing let you know if there's been any issues with it. And then after one year, we'll do the yearly increments. So thanks for watching. I will put a playlist somewhere, probably down in the description of my other battery build if you want to check that out. And subscribe to keep updated with the updates on this battery. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.